All right, everybody, welcome to Dog People, a podcast about the Japanese punk bands Going Steady and Ginnam Boys. I am filling in for our usual host, Bob, because of a certain mishap. Uh, I'm Adam Passion, and I'm joined by our usual co host. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Mike. My name is Mike Huguenor. Hello. All right, and today we have a very special guest with us, the one and only Asai Takeo. Asai, what's up? Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. So I'm just going to jump right into this. Um, let's just start talking about some of the things that you were doing that led to the formation of Going Steady. Mike, do you want to kick off with the first um, question? Sure. Asai-san, I wanted to know, how did you first learn how to play guitar? What brought you to guitar as an instrument? I started playing guitar when I was 18. I started off as a drummer. Oh, okay. I'm a drummer. Yeah. I started playing drums when I was about 14, but when I started thinking about writing my own songs, I couldn't play piano or guitar, so I started learning guitar in high school so that I could write my own songs. Oh, okay. So you were playing in bands even before going steady? And what, what kind of music were you playing in these bands? I was playing covers back then. Thrash metal. Thrash metal. Okay. <laughs> cool. I love, I love thrash metal. Yeah. So you were playing yeah. drums for a Drum. thrash metal band. Yeah. Double bass drum? Metallica. Okay. Mm. So very <laughs> fast drumming. <laughs> okay. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. So, and then you did bands. So in high school, you were playing drums in these slash metal bands, and then you moved to Tokyo for mm. college. So, and that's where you met Mineta and started going steady. So, mm. mm. Yeah, I was playing in a band in Nagoya in high school, and when I told them I wanted to move to Tokyo and play in bands there, nobody came with me. <laughs> okay, so all your friends stayed in Nagoya. <laughs> yeah, so I went by myself. The main reason I moved to Tokyo was to play in a band. Okay, okay. Okay. I also wanted to study management, and I was reading a bunch of books about sociology too. Mm. But music was the main thing. So I started college, and a friend of mine said, There's this guy who knows a ton about music. I'll introduce you. And that guy was Mineta. Ah, okay. So, so. So, so. So, so. Until I met him, I probably knew more about music than anyone else in my community. I was into a lot of different bands and just really loved music. Okay. I didn't think anybody loved music as much as me, but Mineta definitely did. <laughs> so, Mineta loved music, but he didn't play music yet, I think, right? Yeah, he had never played music before, so I gave him a guitar and taught him a few chords. Oh, okay. So when you started going steady, you were playing drums, and he was playing guitar. Just two of you. Yeah, for the first year, it was just the two of us playing acoustic sets mm. outside of the train station. Nobody listened to us. They just walked past without stopping. <laughs> After a year, Abiko, this super bass player, came to town. Yeah. So Mineta was Definitely. like, let's hook up with him. He's a huge music fan, too. So we decided to go to a practice studio together, and we didn't have a drummer, so I filled in on drums. I'd become pretty rusty by that time, but that's how we got started. We mostly just wanted to play in a real club. Oh, uh, okay. So <laughs> that <laughs> So at that time, 
who was writing the melody and who was writing the music together, or were you writing the melody and、うん、Mineta was writing the lyrics? Mineta、うん、had an acoustic guitar, specifically a classical guitar. Oh, okay. Like nylon strings? So, n- nylon strings. <laughs>、uh, o- only, <laughs> only, only four strings. <laughs> Ooh. He would call me up. He didn't have a cell phone, so he would call me on my house phone and say, I'm going to play what I came up with, so record this on your answering、uh-huh. machine. And I would press record and he would start playing, and then I would sort of transcribe it into chords. It's a great process. <laughs> His guitar tuning was totally crazy. So I'd be like, what? <laughs> And he would be like, how's this? Does this sound right? Uh, he was writing the core of the songs, and then I would arrange them in the studio. それをスタジオでアレンジするっていう感じでやってましたね、最初は。Oh、my So then the second year, Abiko came down from Yamagata.、うん、and then after that, I guess Murai came down also from Yamagata. And then,、うん、then you had all four members. Yeah.、うん、While we were still playing as a three piece, Murai was our cameraman. Cameraman. Oh, okay.、Mm. Going steady live cameraman. After watching me play, he thought drums looked fun and he decided to try it himself. So I taught him how to play. Oh, okay. Okay.、うん、All right. So you kind of taught Murai how to play the drums and you taught Mineta how to play guitar. <laughs> so you're kind of like the teacher behind the band. So. <laughs> and after that, I was finally able to switch over to guitar. That's amazing. So when you、yeah. re- recording these albums, like. Boys and girls and stuff like that.、うん、you had only been playing guitar for like two or three years. So, on, wow. On,、うん、play, wow. Play guitar. Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs>、うん、At that time, were you listening mostly to Japanese bands or mostly Western bands or like a mixture? What kind of music were you listening to?、うん、I was listening to all kinds of punk. And I was into music from the UK like Radiohead.、Mm. Um, Radiohead とか、okay. um, あとあの industrial music とか、uh, I like ma- massive attack. Massive attack, okay. Massive、mm. attack,、uh, Portis Head とか、uh, Portis Head,、um, yeah. Trip Hop. Yeah, very dark, dark music. Yeah,、uh, yeah, I think Mike、mm. and I were both big fans of Portis Head at that time.、Mm. Definitely. We all, we all love them. <laughs> Aside from that, my tastes were pretty broad. I was listening to Tool. Tool, okay. Tool とかコーンとかも聞いてて Sure. New metal. So, new metal を聞いてて Okay. でも昔の old school を聞いて But I was also listening to old school stuff like Anthrax and Slayer. Uh-huh. Slayer とか聞いてて Okay. でも Weezer とかも好きだし、Green Day。And I liked Weezer and Green Day, so I guess my tastes were pretty similar to Mineta. What about Japanese bands? Were you also listening to Japanese punk bands? Japanese punk band も聞いたけど、まあ、Blue Hearts。Okay。Yeah, I listened to Japanese punk, of course, like the Blue Hearts, but a lot more American and British music. アメリカの音楽か、UK が多かった。Okay, okay. On Boys and Girls, it sounds like that a little bit. 
a lot of UK influence, um, hmm. UK punk influence. I feel like hmm. Buzzcocks in particular. Buzzcocks, yeah. Mm. <laughs> なんかそのサ,サウンドは、うん、僕は、うん、ヘ,ビヘビーミュージックが好きだったから。As far as the sound, I liked heavy music, so I was going for a really full sort of sound. Mm. Uh, I see. Okay. So, Dakara,、uh, Boys and Girls w When we recorded Boys and Girls, it was all recorded in one take. Just count off and go. But for our second album, Sakura no Uta, I layered up the guitar tracks a lot. Yeah, that's actually something we wanted to ask you about because there's a big change. Between the sound、うん、of boys and girls and、うん、the sound of Sakura no Uta. So, Sakura no Uta was more your taste or your songwriting? So, so, so. So, the first time, boys and girls, in the beginning, we had a lot of recording. When we made Boys and Girls, it was our first time in a recording studio, so we had no idea what we were doing. And the producer was Fukui san from Young Punch. Oh, from Young Punch, okay. He was the producer, and he was like, All right, you guys, we're going to record it all live. Count it off. One, two, three, go. Okay. Boys and Girls. But the Sakura no Uta was. With Sakura no Uta, we took our time putting it together and had more of a story behind it. Story, we made it. Oh, okay, okay.、Mm. So there was kind of more idea, or the concept was kind of more fully formed.、Mm. Yeah, I think that period, and especially even after Sakura no Uta, like the singles,、mm. there were a、yeah. bunch of singles that came after that. It became much more. Um, mm. Kind of a harder sound, more heavy,、mm. heavy sound. Yeah.、Mm. At the same time, it、mm. was, you know, the melodies were very, it was very、mm. melodic and、mm. the melodic, themes、yeah. were about love and things like that. So it was a very interesting mix, you know. You know.、Mm. Yeah. Very emotional, too. I feel like emotional, emotional、yeah. playing. The music、yeah. feels very emotional. Yeah.、Mm. By that time, we had learned how to perform with more control. So then we wanted to try playing with more emotion.、Uh, I see. After Sakura no Uta, we went back to recording everything in one take again. Oh,、uh, okay. Uh-huh. We would open up the studio control room and make as much noise as possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. At the time, Mineta and I were really into At the Drive In, so that probably、oh, okay. affected the recording style too.、Mm. Oh, okay. You know what? I can hear that now. I never thought about it before, but、mm. when you say that, I can hear At the Drive In in your music、mm. from that time. Yeah. Wow. At the Drive In, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine too.、Mm. They all had the same style of leaving the control room open and recording it all live. We felt like that style of recording、yeah. had so much feeling, which is why we wanted to do something similar. I think also, compared to other Japanese punk bands at that time,、mm. your recordings were very loud and noisy. Yeah, noisy. Yeah. Other Bands, other Japanese punk bands tried to be very clean and precise. You know,、mm. pop punk was very clean.、Mm-hmm. And your guys was more about chaos and big energy. Yeah, chaos. Yeah. Yeah, di- distortion, get a lot of feedback. Yeah.、Mm. Yeah, very much so. Lots. Yeah. We were like, distortion, guitar, and feedback. The combination of guitar distortion, feedback, heavy rhythms, and shouting was what gave our music its charm, I think. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. That was definitely the going steady sound, <laughs> I think, for sure. Yeah. 
Talking about this era of going steady at the end, the singles. There's a way you play on that, mm. on those songs, and on Sakura no Uta, mm. where you play the octave very high up, very fast. Mm. And I was wondering if you heard other guitarists play that, or if that was something that came naturally out of you guys writing together. The the high octave on uh, G string, high up. Neither Mineta nor I had any technique at all. <laughs> we didn't know anything about the minor pentatonic scale or whatever. Minor pentatonic scale, Okay. <laughs> We'd just start out humming a melody. <laughs> okay. That was always first. I think I got that from Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead. Johnny Greenwood got it. Okay. Creep. Sure, sure. Jaja. Jaja. Da-da-da. Da-da-da. He was a big influence. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think. It's interesting because that guitar style, your guitar style, influenced、mm. a lot of other guitar players,、mm. not only in Japan, but I think even in America.、Hey. You know, Mike <laughs> used to play sort of a similar style that、mm. I think was inspired by you. He would play kind of high up on the neck, you know, really fast. High position.、Um, mm. And from that, I heard other bands, you know, Copying that same style. So I think that style influenced a lot of guitar players.、Oh, thank you. <laughs> I really loved grunge music, stuff on the CMJ charts, Sonic Youth and Nirvana. CMJ chart とかのあの Sonic Youth と Nirvana の影響をかなり受けてますね。ああ。うん。で、その不協和音なんだけどその So I was thinking of how I could get that sound more up front,、uh, but I feel like that sound just sort of happened. I mean, we weren't good at guitar at all, <laughs> so we just tried to play with more power. Ah, <laughs>、uh, so that energy, energy and power energy. instead of technique. Okay.、Mm. I feel that, but I think、um, the energy and the power. Created a technique a little、mm. bit. It's very cool. I love it. <laughs> I feel like your playing has a lot of heart. It feels like it comes from the heart more than technique. And I wondered if you felt the same way, but it, sound, it sounds kind of like you do. Like that、yeah. was an influence. Ah,、uh, kimochi, kimochi, only kimochi. Desu,、ね <laughs> uh, only kimochi. <laughs> only kimochi. But, <laughs> I still play guitar every day, and I'm learning a lot from listening to blues and stuff, like、uh, John Frusciante from Red Hot Chili Peppers. His music is really good. I think my guitar playing now is influenced a lot by him. Okay, okay. Maybe I just like guitarists named John. Johnny Greenwood.、Huh. John Frusciante. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The big Johns. <laughs> Jimmy Page. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy John.、Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy John. <laughs> Jimmy Page. <laughs> When I was in Going Steady, I thought Jimmy Page was so old. So I didn't listen to him, but now、uh. I love him. Okay. Okay.、Mm. Mm. Johnny Greenwood. Uh, Boku Mo loved Johnny Greenwood. One of my favorites. Yeah, he's a genius. When I was in high school, I really liked Guns N' Roses too. I wasn't really into their show business side, but when I hear them now, Slash's guitar playing is great. Yeah, Slash's guitar playing, yeah. I think. I think Slash Axel Rose is a big show business kind of guy, 
But I think Slash mm. just likes guitar. <laughs> so, 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 so. Yeah, mm. Axel Rose is just show business, but Slash yeah. really loves guitar. And and dinosaurs apparently. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Great dino fact, Adam. Yeah, dino fact. I have a question for you about um, the kind of going steady Seishun Punk era. Mm. I think you played with a lot of bands from that time. Mm. Are there Mm. any bands that left a really strong impression on you or that you think people should know about more now? Passing Truth Drive from Sendai were really cool. Passing Truth Mm. Drive. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So it was cool. They played with lots of emotion and were a big okay. influence. Yeah, I've never heard that. But they weren't Seishun Punk. Okay. They were hardcore. Okay. Hardcore. Mm. Okay. I mean, we were called Seishun Punk, but we thought of ourselves as just a rock band or a punk band. That label was just sort of put on us. Uh, <laughs> Passing Truth Drive. Okay, I'll check them out. Yeah. Cool. Abiko put out their record on his old label, uh, Stiffing. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So at that time, in Going Steady, obviously there were four members. Three of them were all from Yamagata. They were all, you know, childhood friends. And you... We're the only person, you know, mm. from Aichi, Aichi um, mm. you know, you're not part of their original group of friends or whatever. Did you ever feel sort of left out or, you know, that you weren't part of their little community or whatever? Uh, so oh, okay. Mm. Not at all. I mean, they were from Yamagata, but we met in Tokyo. Tokyo is just a big collection of hicks. <laughs> okay, I see. <laughs> Country people from all over mix here. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> all right. So after after Going Steady broke up, yeah. you did a few projects with Ishimaru-san from Snail Ramp, um, yeah, Ishimaru-san. including Mill Nuts <laughs> and NIA and bands like that. So, can you talk a little bit about that experience? Ishimaru, ne? Uh. Ishimaru was my senpai, but after Going Steady broke up, I didn't want to do music anymore. I went off backpacking. Oh, okay. I wanted to take a break from music, but I got a phone call. I'm not sure if you know this, but I was invited to play in Snail Ramp at first. Oh, really? So, the snail ramp in Hyde, they were there. Ishon Yarot, Ishimaru san and Takemura san asked me to join snail ramp. What? Yeah, let's join the snail ramp. But I didn't like snail ramp. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's kind of a different style. Their kind of happy ska and the the kind of music that, so, so, that you were making. Yeah, for me and Mineta, the only ska we were into was like Operation Ivy, or here in Japan, bands like Fruity. Fruity, so good. Nice Fruity, Fruity. I loved Fruity, mm-hmm. but I didn't want to make commercial music like Snail Ramp. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chin Nakamura used to play guitar for Snail Ramp. Uh, yeah, definitely. So when he went to go join Ginnan boys, they were like, Asai, you should join in his place. <laughs> like a trade? No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, okay. 
I told them no, but since their guitarist had quit, they couldn't play shows until they found a new one. So during that time, Ishimaru-san told me he was starting a new band that he wanted me to join. That was Milnuts. Yeah, Milnuts, yeah, yeah. The singer for this new band was going to be Dynamite from the ska yeah. punk band Duck Missile. Oh, uh, yeah, Duck Missile. They're sort of similar to Op Ivy too, I think, yeah. yeah. Mineta and I actually love Duck Missile. Sure. <laughs> they were kind of dumb and sounded like Operation Ivy. Oh, yeah, sure. Especially the bass, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so. I loved it. So when I heard Dynamite was involved, I decided to try it out. <laughs> so Dynamite, Ishimaru-san, and I went into the studio together. Uh, uh -huh. At the studio, I turned the volume up all the way on my Marshall amp and played as loud as I could, and everyone was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, but there, on the... On the Millnet's album, there is a song called Take Girl. Uh, uh, mm. That song was written completely by you, right? Mm. Like the melody mm. and the lyrics. That one totally makes me think of Going Steady. Mm. Like, it, it's totally a Going Steady song oh, yeah, ne? to me, like the melody and everything. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like that. I mean, Mineta and I, Abiko and Murai too, we were mm. all about melody, so I don't think I can get rid of that part. But after Going Steady broke up, I was sure I'd never be in a band that could top what we had done. There was no lineup better than those members in Going Steady. But these guys were like, even so, just play something with us. <laughs> so that song that you wrote for Mill Nuts, were mm. those originally intended to be going steady songs or? Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Zen, 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 zen. No, not at all. Toward the end of Going Steady, Mineta only wanted to do songs that he had written. You know that Ginnan Boys was supposed to be Mineta's solo project, right? Uh, well, there was that, that Elephant Kashimashi CD that he did. Yeah, uh it -huh. Mm. Mineta wanted to come up with something that was completely his own songs and his own concept, and that's why Going Steady broke up. Oh, okay. So, so, so. 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 So, so, at first, yeah. everyone went their separate ways, but Mineta asked Murai to join him as a backup musician. Hmm. Abiko was against it from the beginning, okay. but this guy Chiba-san from the Set You Free concert series talked him into joining too. In other words, Going Steady was a four-piece, but the concept of Ginan Boys was Mineta's one-man band. Ah, like a solo project. So I was invited to play in Mill Nuts and NIA, but my heart wasn't really in it. Uh, okay. There's just not that much emotion in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess... Yeah, it's, it's a very different, um, just a very different kind of feeling, you know. <laughs> yeah, the biggest difference was the way they practiced. In Going Steady, everyone's sound was super loud. <laughs> Mineta would scream at the top of his lungs, but you could barely even hear him. <laughs> it would be so loud in our practice yeah. space that the owner of the building would knock on the door and tell us to turn it down. <laughs> Uh, that was, it was like a soundproof really studio, right? Well, like, well, of course the room was soundproof, <laughs> but the whole building would shake. <laughs> yeah, so when I would practice with the other bands, they would all be turned down so low it wasn't exciting at all. Yeah. 
I mean, I guess that's probably so. normal, the normal level. But <laughs> once you've been in going steady, <laughs> it's like you can't. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> だって、僕らは、あの、ロックンロールミュージックアンドプレイラウドっていうのがゴイングステラー。ああ、OK。うん。いや、I guess volume is like a necessary ingredient. そうそうそう。<笑>必要材料だった。<laughs> yeah, it's essential. So yeah, I tried a few different projects, and they ended up being good experiences, I guess. But at that time, you wanted to be doing something other than music, right? Like you wanted to be doing, I don't know, other things. Yeah. After going steady, I wanted to travel. Okay. In Japan, people talk about taking trips to find themselves. Mm -hmm. Searching for yourself. Yeah, but I already knew what I was supposed to do. Even if I wasn't in going steady anymore,、uh, I knew that connecting people was my life work. Okay.、うん、so you didn't need to find yourself because you already そうそう figured that out, so、うん、you just wanted to get out there. So, I don't know if you can do it. I don't know if you can do it. Yeah, here in Japan or in America or Europe or Asia or wherever I went, I realized I could communicate with people even if we didn't speak the same language through eye contact and broken English. Hmm. So, to understand more deeply, I realized that no matter what you do, the important thing is to do it with passion. Sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's something that hasn't changed between going steady and what I'm doing now. Music and business might seem totally different, but how I approach them is the same. That's great. And, and you know, same kind of idea as before, not really being about like、uh, the, the technical side of being a musician, but more about coming from the heart and connecting with people.、Uh, yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. Even this interview, we're able to meet and connect because of the music that we made. Thank you again, Asai san. It's so nice to talk to you. Mike, thank you. Adam, thank you. I think this is a very difficult thing. This might be hard to translate, but when I was little, and I guess everyone is like this, The question of what I want to be, do I want to be famous, or what sort of legacy do I want to leave behind? When you're young, that desire is so big, but after going steady broke up, I realized that I was happy enough just being myself. That's, that's great, yeah. Had you always felt so sure of yourself, or did you have to find that? Well, you know, I always liked music and had this desire to play music and a desire to express something. But music for me starts from a feeling of loss. I think that idea is in Mineta's lyrics as well. Hmm. There's a strong link between music and the idea of searching for something or losing something. Hmm. I think a big reason that I decided to play guitar and write songs was Kurt Cobain's suicide. Oh, yeah. That feeling of loss, Nirvana's music is still here, but the feeling of loss that Kurt Cobain was gone really affected me. Hmm. That's powerful. Hmm. 
I think his death really changed the entire music scene. There's like this whole post Nirvana world. Instead of show business bands, indie and grunge became mainstream. Show business no ongaku the Yuriwa, grunge toka, so you indie music ga ne mainstream in that the the bands that came after, like Weezer and Green Day, even Radiohead, had this theme in their music like, we're all terrible and everything sucks. <laughs> I think Going Steady definitely had that in our music. Sure. Loss, destruction, and creation. That's what rock music is all about. Yeah. Music is about putting all those things together to create love. Okay. All of that, all of that, put it together and it becomes love. The story of love. Yeah. So when I was in Going Steady, I sort of took that for granted. But now looking back, I realize how great music is. I understand that I didn't just love music, but I was loved back through music. That's why I still play guitar now. I still love music. That's great to hear, honestly. Um, yeah, no, I think um, you, I do think you contributed a lot to modern, like, punk music. Um, and, and again, Thank you for that, Asai san. Um, very sincerely, thank you. Um, I think you're playing in, in your presence and and the way you guys um, brought emotion into music uh, in your own way, in a way that I think, you know, emo music already existed and that, that idea existed. But I think that you found a way to express it um, that I think was very clear and um, means a lot to a lot of people. I really appreciate it. Now that, you know, the music is all done, you know, Going Steady is finished and these other bands that you were in have finished. Of course, you're still playing music now, but uh, now you're going down a different path. Now you're working in a restaurant and you're preparing food mm. for people and things like that. Are there any um, similarities that you find between food and music? Ah, it's a lot. Mm. First, Oh, yeah, definitely. When people eat good food, nobody's angry. Everyone's happy and enjoying it together. Yeah. <laughs> With music, I mean, some music is meant to share feelings of anger and frustration. You know, bands like Rage Against the Machine trying to rally people against discrimination and stuff. Of course that exists, but the great thing about food is it makes everyone happy. I mean, I love to eat, and I love to cook, and with food, something you create has the power to make other people happy. In that way, I think it's really similar to music. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's awesome. Good answer. <laughs> so now Abiko is, you know, he's working on a farm in mm. Guma. Um, you mm. know, he's, he's growing vegetables. So I guess that's mm. sort of, you know, like connected to food and and cooking and stuff like that yeah he's growing vegetables and i use his vegetables in my restaurant oh really okay so did you guys connect about food and stuff like even back when you were playing you know in going steady we were both definitely interested in food i used to cook food for the whole band okay so even now, you and Abiko sort of connect about food and stuff. 
サニーレタスとか彼が作ったのを提供してもらったり。Yeah. I use his lettuce and stuff.、Uh, so, yeah.、Uh, it's cool that we still have that connection. そういうつながりはあって面白いな。<笑> Well, so this is a question that Bob wanted to ask you. So, you know, when you're listening to music, sometimes you hear a song or a singer and you think, I want my music to sound like this. Is there anything similar to that in the food world? Ah, it's not like this. Ah, there aren't any people I want to emulate, but when I'm eating, I can always sort of reverse engineer the food. どういうふうに調理してるのかなっていうのが逆算っていうかできるんですよ。ああ、OK。あ、これはこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイスとこういうスパイ Like a musical recipe. So, so, yeah, the musical ah, recipe. So, so, when I'm listening to it, I think about how to make it, and the same goes for food. When I'm eating, I'm thinking about how to make it. I think input and output are the same for me.、Oh, yeah, I definitely feel that with music.、Um, you hear something and you just start thinking about, you know, like, is it this instrument? Is it, you know, this patch or whatever, or this amp or this、um, pedal? And like, Start running through the, the combinations of things that could have brought that to be. Yeah, that's sure. 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 Like, I don't know, 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 I don't Very true. Yeah. I have one more question for you about food. So,、はい、as a fellow Aichi Prefecture, you know, Nagoya person, I guess you've been living in Tokyo now, maybe even longer than you lived here in Nagoya. But、uh, what is your favorite Nagoya food? Or what is a food from Nagoya that you really miss when you are away from home? Huh, the best local Nagoya food. Right now, I like gifu tanmen. Ah, gifu tanmen is good. <laughs> It's called gifu tanmen, but it actually started in Inazawa City in Aichi Prefecture. Gifu tanmen is good. Yeah, it's good. What else? Everything in Nagoya is miso based, like miso katsu, but I don't really like miso. Miso is not there, so I don't like miso. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Everything just ends up tasting the same, like putting miso on oden. Yeah, yeah. I think it's sort of nonsense to make everything taste like miso.、Uh, But I do like miso nikomi udon. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Tebasaki is good too. <laughs> What about Hitsumabushi? Hitsumabushi is good, really good. Yeah, good. I guess I do love Nagoya food. <laughs> <laughs> so, in your house, when you have miso soup, like at breakfast, is it red or is it white?、Uh, mix. Mix? Okay.、Mm. Four mix. Four mix. Four. Yeah. Red, white, shinshu, kyushu. Mix. Ah.、Uh, mm. What makes shinshu different?、Uh, it has more of a bean taste to it. I guess it's more mild,、uh, maybe. Kyushu. Kyushu is soy sauce is really sweet, but is the miso too?、Mm, yeah, kyushu is sweet.、Uh, Nagasaki miso is sweet. I have four types of miso in a Tupperware in my kitchen, and I base the blend on how I feel that day. So, Mike,、mm. this is really, really local food culture <laughs> thing, but <laughs> Nagoya is、yeah. famous for this thick, red, dark miso. 
And it's like this famous thing about Nagoya. And we put on everything. It's a kind of a famous thing about Nagoya food culture. Um, and everywhere else in the country has the traditional white type of miso that you probably have had in America. So Something good about, a little bit different about all of them that you like all well, Yeah, that's sort of what he's saying. So like one is a little bit sweet and one is very... Um, mm. The Nagoya kind is very... I don't even know how to explain it. I guess it's very rich. Mm. Yeah, they all have kind of a slightly different flavor to them. Cool. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, I mostly know, I think, the yeah, cl- like the white one, basically. If you come out to Nagoya, I'll give you lots of the uh, red miso. It's very, uh, very different. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in, for sure. <laughs> well, Mike, do you have any other questions for Asai before we finish up? I feel so good about everything. I feel like we've we've learned some really amazing things, and um, I really appreciate um, you, you uh, being available for as long as you were today. Especially considering <laughs> it took a while for me to get here. Um, but um, really, really appreciate it, Asai San. Thank you so much. Hey, really sincerely, great to meet you. You know, you it was my pleasure to get to talk about all of this. <laughs> thank you again for joining us today. And everybody at home, thank you for listening to Dog People. We will be back again sometime in the future. Uh, thank you again. <laughs>